Q&A Markup is a simple computer language written for people with little or no programming experience. It transforms blocks of text into interactive question and answer sessions, Q&As. These Q&As can be used as standalone expert systems or in the aid of a rule-based document construction. Plus, they can be fun and the entire project is open source. Among other things, that means free. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you around the Q&A editor available at qnamarkup.org. The editor is pretty straightforward. Um, you type your source code in here and your output shows up over here on the right. Um, to give you an idea of what a Q&A can do, let's look at an example. Um, this is probably going to date me, but um, shall we play a game? So I'm going to say no, I, I don't feel like playing a game. And you know, that's just really sad. So again, we get asked, shall we play a game? So I'm going to say sure. Yay! Oh, that's very exciting. How about a game of chess? Well, you know what? If I look down below chess, there's this other option. Ooh, how about thermonuclear war? And uh, this is where if you have not seen war games, you should all go out and give it a watch. Um, but the only way to win is not to play, apparently. So it's actually, we have, have I actually seen war games? So I'm going to say no. And uh, suffice it to say that uh, thermonuclear war is the wrong answer. So I'm being asked again, shall we play a game? I'm going to say sure. Yay again. And I'm going to say, yeah, chess sounds good. And then now I have this nice little game of chess and I can just play a little game of chess here and, and, and that's all fun. Um, now that entire interaction that we just went through is defined entirely by just these lines here, these lines of code. And then you can't see all of them because they're sort of moving off the screen. So I'll turn on the word wrap here and that's it. That's everything. Um, just those few lines of code. Of code, I made this all happen. Um, but let's look at a more substantial um, example. So here I'm being asked, would you like to write a letter to Santa? I'm going to say yes. Now what's your name? Well, my name's David. And have I been naughty or nice? I'm going to say naughty because that's a more interesting answer. And what would I like for Christmas? A ball. Very straightforward, very simple. Well, it's going to say, all right, am I ready to see my letter? I'm going to say yes. And then now I've got this new page here. I've got instructions, proofread your letter, print it out, and mail it to Santa Claus at the North Pole. And here's my letter all put together, dear Santa. I'm sorry that I've been naughty. I will work hard to be nice in the new year. Um, I would like a ball for Christmas. I hope all is well up north. Sincerely, David. So you can see it, it integrated all of that information um, that I had given it. Uh, when it was asking me things before. Um, now, of course, uh, if you're not up for games or writing letters to Santa, you could consider that in our last two examples, we could just have easily have been directing people to resources um, or helping them draft documents um, of, of any type. So let's, let's take a, a step back um, and sort of uh, make things more concrete. Um, so if we go back over here to our editor, um, what we're going to do is basically add it. We'll, we'll go ahead and clear this field here so I can move everything out. And basically to, to get the output to change, I click on update outputs. And I've entirely made this empty, so it's going to throw some errors here. And it's going to say, oh, I have to have a Q and I have to have an A. And at its most simple, Q&A is just a collection of nested and alternating Qs and As. So let's build something simple from scratch. I'm going to say Q do you want to learn Q and A. And if I go ahead and I just say update outputs, that's going to again still yell at me because I don't have an A. I just have a Q. So I'm going to give an A here. And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say no. And if I update that, now I've done something that it can understand. And it says, do you want to learn Q and A? Yes and no. Now, I don't have much in here, so if I click on these, nothing's really going to happen. So um, one important thing to realize is I'm not confined to just those two. I, I could have said maybe. Um, I could have said maybe not. I could add as many options as I want here. But things really get interesting once I start nesting text. So I'm going to put another Q tag in here. And I'm going to say uh, this Q tag's under yes. So basically, this is what I'm going to see if someone clicks on yes. And I'm going to tell them to read the syntax page. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to update that. And then here's my output. And now if I go ahead and I click on yes, I get that read the syntax page. 
Um, now, as you can see, clicking on the A underneath something triggers the, the tags underneath it. Um, and this it video isn't a comprehensive lesson in Q&A. So if you want to learn the ins and outs of everything you need to do to write Q&A, its entire syntax, um, you can find that all here by just clicking on the syntax link. And actually, this documentation should only take um, about uh, 20 minutes to read. And after playing with it for an hour, um, you should know about everything you could possibly want to know about Q&A. And it has very uh, explicit examples with code um, and example Q&As over here. Um, there are really only those sort of Qs and As. Those are tags. They're you know special. Uh, characters that make the computer do something. And there are only 10 tags in all of Q&A. So you can learn this pretty quickly. And again, there are all these examples. So everything you could possibly want to learn, click on that syntax uh, link on the main page. Um, pretty much, if you can think of a flowchart, you can turn it into a Q&A. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Here's a, a fun little flowchart. Um, it's titling a law journal article or note. Um, and basically, you come up with a name, and then, you know, does it contain a pun? Great, you could use it if it does. Um, if it doesn't contain a pun, any wordplay? Well, if there's wordplay, then that, that probably works. But if there's no wordplay, then you at least got to have Latin. Otherwise, you know, I mean, really seriously, uh, is, is that really the type of article you want to publish? Um, so let's see what this would look like if we were actually to do it in Q&A. So, um, okay, sorry, I have it over here already. Uh, up and here's the 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 code that made that flowchart and you can see it's just a collection of nested Q's and A's. You'll see there's some other things in here that we haven't seen yet. Uh, there's an X. Um, there's this doc tag, and all of these are explained in the syntax link. So if you read that syntax link, you'll get everything you need. But let's just see what that would look like. What is my working title? I'm going to say heads in the cloud. And full disclosure, that was the name of my note in law school, and it was about uh, cloud computing and encryption. And is there a pun in there? Yes, that's very definitely a pun. So it's going to say, great, I can use that. And it's actually going to ask me if I would like to start writing. And I'm going to say, sure. And then here I have um, it all queued up with my title. I'm very similar to the letter to Santa. Um, and and that's you know a pretty gives you a pretty good idea of what you could do. You could imagine that instead of those documents, those could be demand letters, um, those uh, the nested questions. They could be giving you answers um, to uh, to questions about where you could find resources. Um, there are um, obviously there's the facility to take those buttons, turn them into links, so you can actually based upon someone's question answers to questions, you can send them to a website. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, just a, a little more just about sort of the anatomy of this this editor here. Um, if you want to save your work to work on later, put this into a text file. Uh, your output, if you want to see what that looks like um, all by itself, you can just click on this output button and it'll show you what it looks like by itself. Um, but you also can go ahead and you can use this pull down here to save it. You can say save HTML full and save that file um, as an HTML file, which just can be viewed in any browser, um, or copy and paste this code into a text file and, and save it as a .html. Um, when you come back in, if you had a saved markup file, not a saved output file, but a saved uh, markup file, you can load that file by clicking on load. Um, and you can see some example templates, some of the things we've talked about here in this dropdown, if you just want to sort of see how those work. Um, you can play with the style of things. You can change uh, the colors of your uh, of your bubbles um, by using the style button here. And if you want to see some examples of other people's work, go ahead and click on uh, the gallery link up in the top right. Um, and and that's pretty much our our introduction. Um, it's important to note that Q&A is an active development. So if you spot a bug or have a suggestion, be sure to report it by clicking on the report bug uh, slash issue link down here at the, in the lower left. And hopefully that's enough to whet your appetite. Um, remember, everything you need to know about writing Q&A can be found on that syntax page. And um, there's even actually a, a quick start guide um, with a bunch of uh, flowcharts that, uh, that you could look at um, if you wanted to sort of 
see some examples of exactly how things went together. So hopefully that's enough um, to get you excited and um, hopefully you'll enjoy working with Q&A as much as I've enjoyed making it. And, um, and that's that. All right, thanks.